Hey, Ryzen here. Today, we are going to build an exciting feature for a productivity app, a system for setting and tracking goals to help users get closer to their dream life. We'll be working within a TypeScript monitor repo and using React for the frontend. Although the source code for Increaser is in a private repository, you can still find all the reusable components and utilities in the Ryzen Kit repository. Our goal is to create a beautiful and user-friendly page for managing goals. Users should be able to set a goal deadline to a specific date or link it to their age. They should also see their age and goals on a timeline to instill a sense of urgency and track progress. Each goal will have a status to do, in progress or done. Completed goals will be moved to a separate section to keep the main view uncluttered. Users can assign an emoji to each goal for easy identification on the timeline. For measurable goals, users can set a numeric target and track their current value. They should also write a high-level plan for achieving the goal and, most importantly, set recurring tasks to be completed daily, weekly, or monthly to reach the goal. First, let's look at the goal entity. It has properties like an ID, an emoji, a name, a status, a deadline, a plan, a target, and task factories for creating recurring tasks. If we use DynamoDB as our database and goals are stored in the user item as a record with the goal ID serving as the key. This setup allows for more efficient updates on a specific goal. We won't delve into the backend implementation details, but if you're curious about how to seamlessly implement backends within a TypeScript model repo, check out the video in the description. On the front end, we have two sub pages one for active goals and another for completed goals. Both subpages share the same layout. We place a view selector for switching between pages in the page title and wrap the content in a user state only component to ensure that the goals component is rendered only when user data is present. The goals view selector renders the radio input component from ResonKey. When an option is selected, we call push from use router to navigate to selected subpage. The use current page view hook examines the current path and returns the last path segment. If the view is invalid, it throws an error. Increda has a specific navigation system that allows only one level of nesting. The get a path function receives the route path and if that path has a view, it expects a second argument for the view. The function returns the path to the page with the view if provided. The active view consists of three sections, a timeline, an educational block that the user can dismiss, and a list of goals with an add goal button. Let's start with the goals timeline. Since it makes the most sense to display the timeline in relation to the user's age, we prompt the user to set their date of birth if it hasn't been set yet. The set DLB prompt component uses the opener and panel prompt components from Ryzen Kit to display a prompt that opens a model with a form for setting the date of birth. Opener is a simple wrapper around the use state hook, providing more declarative control over opener components. Panel prompt is a component that resembles a panel but has an interactive UI with bold text at the center. At Increaser, we represent the user's date of birth as a string created by calling data string with a day entity. The day entity is an object that includes a year and a day index of that year. While we could have used a regular date format, I prefer having a specific entity for a day that describes that particular point in time as we don't need other aspects of the date concept. The set DOB form is a straightforward form with a single value managed by use state. On submit, we call the update user mutation and close the form. To support escape and enter key presses, we use the getForm props function. This function returns the on key down and on submit properties for the form element. The use DOB boundaries hook returns the minimum and maximum date of birth values. We use the today function to convert a timestamp to a day entity and sub years from date VNS to subtract years from the current date. On submit, we call the update user mutation which will do an optimistic update of the user state and call the appropriate API endpoint to update the user's date of birth. If you're curious about learning how the day input works, 
check out the video in the description. Let's move on to the timeline and define the necessary context for this component. We need to have an interval for the timeline to know where it starts and ends, the date of birth and array of time labels. The goals timeline provider component calculate the timeline interval based on the user's date of birth and active goal. The start of the timeline is either the user's last birthday or the first goal deadline, and the end is either the user's birthday three years from now or the last goal deadline plus one year. We also assert the date of birth and calculate time labels to ensure that the maximum number of labels is 10, even if the user goals span more than 10 years. We use the range function to generate an array of numbers from zero to count and then map over it to calculate the timestamp for each label. Since some goals might have the same deadline and we don't want them to overlap on the timeline, we group goals by their deadline and render them within a vertical stack. We use the group items function to group items into a record where the key is the deadline timestamp and the value is an array of goals. Since the size of the goal item is fixed and defined in the goals timeline config, we calculate the height of the container based on the maximum group size. We then iterate over the group goals, calculate the left position based on the timestamp and render the timeline goal item component. To avoid prop drilling, we leverage the current goal provider component, which receives the goal as a value and makes it available to all child components. To easily create such providers, view the getValueProviderSetup function from RisingKit. The timeline goal item component renders the goal emoji and an indicator that represents the goal status. We the use theme hook from style components to access the theme and apply the appropriate color to the indicator. To make it easier to position the goals on the timeline by their center coordinate, we use the position absolutely center vertically component from Rising Kit. This component uses a combination of absolute and relative positioning to vertically center the content. To display labels on the timeline, we use the time labels component. We calculate the left position of each label based on the timestamp and the interval duration. Additionally, we use the getUserAgeAd function to calculate the user's age at a specific timestamp. Since it's important to see goals in relation to user's current age, we display the user's current age on the timeline as well. If the user made a mistake in setting their date of birth, they can easily correct it by clicking on the age. With the timeline and group goals in place, we can now move on to the goals list. We wrap it with the active item ID provider component to make the active goal ID available to all child components. This can be useful in situations where other items need to adjust their appearance if one item is active. For example, in a drag and drop list, we might want to disable dragging of items when one item is active. In our case, the active item is the one being edited. To display the goals, we retrieve the active items from the state using the use active goals hook and render the goal item component for each item. We wrap each goal item with the current goal provider component to make the goal available to all child components. If the current goal is active, the goal item component will render the edit goal form component. Otherwise, it will render the goal item content component wrapped with a horrible component from Ryzen. You can learn more about horrible component in this video. In the goal item content, we display the goal name prefixed with an emoji and the goal status tag on the right. We then show how much time is left before the deadline. If the goal has a plan, we render the goal plan component. If the goal has task factories, we render the goal task factories component. In the goal status tag, we display the goal status as text with a corresponding color. For measurable goals, we also display the current value the target value and the percentage of completion. In the goal deadline component, we first display either the user's age or a date using the format goal deadline function. If the goal is not overdue, we also display the time left until the deadline using the format goal time left function. Both the goal plan and goal task factories components use the goal section component to display the corresponding icon on the left and have a text content on the right. The goal plan is simply 
plain text. While the goal task factories component iterates over the task factories array, displaying the task name and cadence within a goal section prefixed with a checkmark icon. When the user clicks on the goal item, we show the edit goal form component, which allows the user to edit or delete the goal. We display the form within a panel component from Ryzen Kit. On finish of console, we call the set active item ID with null to close the form. When submitting the form, we call the update goal mutation with the updated goal fields, which are being diffed using the get updated values function. There are quite a few inputs that go into the edit goal form component, and we won't go into details about each one. Since these types of forms are quite common in Increaser, we use the edit delete form footer component to hold the delete console and save buttons. To prompt the user to add a new goal, we use a combination of the opener and list add button components from Resident Kit. To create a new goal, we use the create goal form component, which is very similar to the edit goal form component. We reuse the same inputs and leverage the same use is goal form disabled hook to ensure that both the name and the line are present. That's all. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.